Are you ready to learn how to actually get things done with your virtual assistant? If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Lian Lai. I run a virtual assistant agency here in the Philippines called 2XU, and I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to open business from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, when it comes to actually working with a virtual assistant, there's a few things that come into play. Unlike if they were your graphic artist or they were your social media person, they're working with you directly and working closely with you and essentially becomes an extension of you. And again, instead of just a, someone who's just focused on the graphics of the business or the social media of the business, your virtual assistant is super supposed to be the person again that extension of you of like if you can't get it done I think your assistant could probably do it so in the last couple of years into XU and of course working with my own amazing assistant I've kind of come up with different systems that I've taught both of our clients that I have really tried to master myself I've gone through a lot of the iterations and mistakes of how you can actually work with your assistant and actually get things done not just hiring someone to work with you but actually get things done and move things forward so the first part is having them shadow you now this is usually you know easier said than done but this is mostly having an open communication with your ea of your own priorities of what you need to get done and what you actually got done this could be through just an open chat that you might have with them this could be having just a communication of like this is my priorities for the day these are the things i want to finish by the end of the day and this is what actually got done or by actually having them shadow you maybe in that first week so some of our clients or i've done this myself before where you just have your assistant basically follow you through the day of like hey this is what i'm working on right now at this hour this is what i got done or some of our clients even have their EAs be just on Zoom, kind of an accountability partner at a little corner right there and actually have their shared screen so then the assistant can see what the client is working on. So depending on what works for you, the importance of this, which is going to the next step, is getting your assistant to create a report about the things that usually get done in at least a week or if you can extend it to two weeks, even better. The purpose for this is then you both can start identifying what are the things that you can easily delegate and have them do and what are the things that you've really been wanting to get done but keep getting to number two instead of it getting to number one with this you basically are creating what we call into it your 80 20 report of like out of the 10 things that you're doing what is your 20 percent basically your two tasks that move things along in the company and then working to delegate basically the rest of the eight to either your assistant or the rest of the team so that's essentially the process that you're doing here is you're having your assistant go through this with you so you have a little bit of awareness of what needs to get done in the business and what still isn't getting done that hopefully again either they or someone in your team can get done next is you want to then start creating goals with your assistant now i don't mean long-term goals i mean short-term goals so whether you have been working with your assistant for six months or three days you want to go through that list basically of tasks that you now have and go through hey here are three objectives basically for the next quarter of things that i want to make sure you take over so so as a really good example for my own assistant, when she was starting out, I was having her basically master creating content for my Instagram. So that was one of the first ones because that was the one that kept getting delayed on my end. It was also mastering how to manage my email and then mastering how to manage my calendar. So I had her go through a few iterations where month per month we had different goals for her. The first month was, for example, for the email side, the first one was just her filtering through, creating filters, making sure things were tagged in the right way. The second month was making sure she can start writing up drafts on how some of the emails can be responded to. And by the third month, she would just send me a screenshot basically of what she's about to send. And then I would just say yes or no. And it's just sent out to the client or the person who emailed me. So again, be that gradual step by step for you and your assistant so they can actually understand what it is that they're doing and why they're doing it, which of course helps kind of have that long-term, this has fully been delegated and owned by that person. Next is it's really important to have a really good shared task list. Now I have this with my EA where I do have my own task list and she has her own, but we share it between ourselves so everyone can see what is going on. And for a lot of our clients, it's the same way. It's they build a really good task list where they can easily tag who is in charge of what. And again, there's that visibility of what needs to happen day to day so then with that your assistant can know how to support you how to make sure you actually get your priorities done and then for you if you're thinking of delegating things to them there's a way for you to easily just give a task to them without it getting stuck in your head which leads me to the next step which is just creating a really good delegation system between you and your assistant now there's a lot of different ways to do this depending on 
the kind of your comfort level and also like the way that you've worked with other people before. So with my assistant, I have a mix. So most of the time, if I want to delegate tasks to her, we have a daily sync where I go through my own task list. I'm like, hey, I think you can do this. I think you can do that. Or if it's like urgent, I just chat it to her right away. Or if I am moving around or talking to people, I will just basically hit record on WhatsApp and just send her a voice recording. Now, a lot of our clients use Otter, use Telegram, use slack basically for doing that and delegating tasks to their assistant and you basically just need to have a clear way for you to give tasks make sure that those tasks are added to the task list and then processed through which brings me to the next step of making sure you create a capture and processing system so what this is is basically again you have the delegation where you can give ideas or thoughts or note to selves even to your assistant and then they have a system where they process it through whether this goes into your personal notebook this goes into information for a contact maybe that you just met or there's a process where they just add it to your task list or project list so there's a flow basically of what they need to do depending on what information was received so Again, might look differently for you, what your business is, what it is that you do. But the main point of this is to start identifying what are the different types of information that you're sending to your assistant and then how they're going to process it once they actually receive it. Next is then the fun part of training them and giving them feedback. So no matter how experienced your assistant is, you will need to train them in your system of how you do things. They might have had 15 other clients before as a virtual assistant, but you might have a different process of how you do it. Unless you're starting from scratch and letting her guide it, you might have your own preferences, the things that you like to see. And of course, it's really important to give feedback. I've seen a lot of really good or could have been really good relationships with clients and REAs, but because they weren't able to give feedback at the right time, their EAs kind of just had this standard of like, oh, this is what's acceptable for the client because I've never heard back if there's any feedback or anything like that. So then for the longest time, the EA has been doing it one way and for the client, they haven't been able to give feedback that it actually isn't acceptable. So you want to have a good loop system basic feedback loop with your assistant where anytime that they are starting to work on something you can give them a small piece of feedback a really good rule of thumb is if they're doing something for the first time the first time creating a report first time doing a single task or outcome is that you ask them to show you where it's at at 20 percent. so if it's 20 percent done they can submit that to you like hey this is so far what i've done so then you can redirect them or encourage them to be on that same path that way, it doesn't have to be that they've worked 100% through the way and you, you know it wasn't actually what was talked about or what was expected. Next is make sure then as you've created all of these systems, if you do have a sync often. So what I mean by this is, like I said earlier, I do have a daily sync with my assistant. It's always the same time unless anything else kind of goes over it, like a client call or anything like that, where it's 9 a.m. every single day. We have a sync. Sometimes it's just 10 minutes. Sometimes it's 30. Sometimes it's an hour. So depending on what we're working on. But it gives us both an opportunity to know that we have this support system that anytime that I need help, she can provide it. Or anytime that she needs help, I can provide it as well. This also builds that relationship with you and your assistant so then they can feel confident like, hey, I have an area basic or arena where I can tell my boss or my client you know, that I need these things or that I'm out of tasks even. It's also a really good opportunity to train them when you have those syncs if you are giving them new tasks or new responsibilities to take over. Next is then making sure that even, you know, either during those syncs or in a separate time, you have a good system to review and adjust. So what we have with my assistant is we have a monthly, every first Monday during that nine o'clock call, we would replace that with a monthly review of like what went well, what went, you know, didn't go really well or didn't go as planned and what couldn't we do moving forward to make sure that it doesn't happen again. It's also a really good time for your assistant to give you feedback on how you can work with them better so then there's that you know syncing and that relationship building and also just a really good way to check if you guys are both on the right path or not and finally there is systematize and iteration so a really important step that usually people miss is actually writing down the documentation of how you and your assistant do certain things so for example how she's doing email management how she's doing the calendar management or even to the point of like how your 
delegating things through your assistant to the team, like how that process works. That way, there is a good default to fall back on. You know, we're strongest as, you know, we fall back to the default of our systems. So building up systems, documenting it, and of course, iterating and improving it as needed is going to be a really essential step for you and your assistant to actually really get things done. It doesn't have to be too complicated to work with your virtual assistant. There's going to be a few systems that you really need to put in place. And once you've hired a really good assistant, things will flow easier anyway. So that's what I'm hoping for that you will experience basically as you start working with your assistant. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below. Do you have your own assistant or are you thinking of hiring one? I would love to know. And if you still haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home, which you guys can check out those two playlists right here and the latest video right here. I hope you guys have an amazing day and that small steps matters and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!